Okay, so here's the circuit working. And I know I usually say that at the end, but um, there were a few interesting things that happened along the way. So let's have a look at the video, what went wrong, and, um, and how, uh, how it was fixed. So firstly, I've got these voltage uh, indicators that I hadn't used before. So uh, I just needed to uh, put some little male headers on there just to make it easy to plug into the breadboard. So that's the first thing. And I get a little bit of a attack of the nerves being on camera doing this, so excuse that. Um, probably should have put on some shrink wrap as well. But given that it's a fairly temporary arrangement, I'm not too fussed. I just wanted to make it stable so I could do the videoing of the uh, of the final result. Uh, here I am swapping glasses to the uh, ridiculous magnifying glasses so I can see what's going on. Yep, so one side on. So this is just a couple of male pins side by side, which is easy then to just plug into the uh, positive and negative rails on the breadboard. So it just holds it in place. I find if I don't do this, sometimes I'm trying to troubleshoot a circuit and I don't realise that in fact one of the uh, leads has come out. So this just makes it a little easier. So the positive and negative, or VCC and ground, however you like to say, is the red and the black one. And this one is what is actually measuring the voltage. These little three-digit voltage meters are about 80 cents. So pretty cheap. And I'm just going to try and here I'm figuring out which hole to plug it in takes me a few moments to decide to plug it into the output. There we go. And I need to plug it into the top of the breadboard because the bottom actually doesn't have a VCC. So that's wrong. Oh, there we go. He's worked it out. That's nice. So I need to put it into the top rail because only ground has been linked by that single green wire down to the bottom rail. Now here's an interesting one. I need to well, I thought I needed to hold this um, in a steady position while I adjust. So I thought I'll just get out some Play-Doh or Silly Putty, depending on what side of the planet you're on. So there it is. What I forget in my enthusiasm is that it's salty and therefore conducts. So... Yeah, it's good at holding it, but then it's also good at shorting it. And you can see the display. So I think it's the connections to start with, and I'm pushing and carrying on, but no. It's, yeah, it's the actual salt. Oh, there you go, he's realised. So then I think, ah, oh, I'll just put on the edge. Surely that will be okay. So I plug it back in again. Just put the Play-Doh on the edge. And no, it's still oscillating. So, hmm, and there's a bit of Play-Doh stuck in the end of the hole as well. So I'll get rid of that. And let's just ignore the Play-Doh altogether. Put that back in the can. Not always useful stuff. Probably should have gone with the blue tack or something else. A piece of tape. Anyway, in the end it wasn't needed because it just simply sits there pretty well behaved. Now, second problem is covering up the actual output while I'm doing this. And also, having the potentiometer effectively the wrong way around. So what I do is I wind this up and up, but end up only going to a natural limit of about 4.9 volts, I think. So I really need to turn that potentiometer around. So yeah, it's reaching, there you go, 4.47, it's reached the limit. This is all the stuff that I'd normally edit out. 
but it does show that it is regulating it. And this is a switching regulator, so I'm just testing the, is that hot? No. Is that hot? No. The linear regulator with 12 volts coming in uh, and having such a big difference between the output voltage and the input voltage, you'd expect some of those components to be hot, but not with a switching circuit. So here I am persisting with, if you like, the wrong way around. And you guys not being able to see what's going on. <laughs> so that's not great. But what I'm seeing is that the output voltage is not shifting the way it should do. So, oh, and it's come out all together. It's actually a pretty rubbish potentiometer. Um, so note to self, get a better one. And I am thinking of actually making this up on a PCB, so it's not as fiddly. So hopefully now we'll be able to see what's going on. Nope, not yet. Now you'll notice, the keen-eyed ones will notice that the power supply has actually dropped out. I don't notice that for a while. So there's an issue with that power pack. And nothing much is changing as a result. So it just needs a bit of a jiggle. I eventually spot it. Hmm. This bit I probably could have edited out. But, hey, this is the warts and all edition. There we go. Yes, it's handy to have 12 volts coming in. And then you can see we're up to 7.87. .7. So now we can actually adjust if I get my big ugly mitts out of the road I think I'm trying to set it to exactly 5 that's my OCD coming out 5.02 yep I'm gonna have another go to adjusting it because I just can't leave it alone but as I said, that is a rubbish potentiometer, so it's not behaving itself in terms of its physicality and in terms of its electrical properties. And what I really want to show here at the end is that once I do get a stable output and I knock it straight away <laughs> to 5.05. .05. But anyway, um, now I'm just going to fiddle with the input voltage. And so that's 13.2. I think I'm just going to wind it up to about 15 volts. And you can see that the output's quite stable. And then wind it back to around, I think, 8 or 9 volts. And the output remains stable. So yeah, that is the circuit working.